DJI have launched this product right here. It is called the DJI Cellular Dongle 2, compatible with the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3. Now, if you don't know what this piece of kit actually promises, let me tell you, it is pretty impressive. Essentially, by attaching one of these to your Air 3 or Mini 4 Pro, what it can do is utilize the mobile phone 4G network to control your drone and provide that video feedback. Essentially, yep, as the theory goes, if you had unlimited battery, providing you had a 4G signal, you could just carry on flying massively beyond visual line of sight. But it's not, of course, just about sheer range. Of course, even though Ocusync 4, which is built into these two drones, is absolutely fantastic, as I've shown on my channel, it also allows you to have that greater signal penetration when flying in a built-up area, or if there's any sort of obstacle between the controller and the drone. So there are many, many uses for these, but what I'm going to do on this video is explain everything to do with this DJI Dongle 2, show you how it connects to the drone, and I'm focusing on the Air 3 for this one for various reasons that I'll explain later on in the video but I'm going to show you exactly how it works, what you need to get it going, and most importantly, give a full flight test so you can see the benefits. So let's get into it. Now this video is of course for educational purposes only and this is a review of the DJI Cellular Dongle 2 and its capabilities. It goes without saying that of course if you do fit the Cellular Dongle 2 and the mounting kit to a DJI Mini 4 Pro it is going to push it over that 249 gram limit so it may affect where you will be able to fly. Now I know many of you are going to claim about visual line of sight but don't forget you know there is many countries where visual line of sight does not particularly apply. Beyond visual line of sight operations are absolutely fine. And of course, you are more than welcome in various countries, including here in the UK, to use a spotter in clear and effective communication, okay, to be able to fly around obstacles, providing somebody has got eyes on the drone, or at least the ability to be able to look up and say, that, yep, that's where it is, okay? So there is a bit more to it than that, because where initially you may think, all right, yeah, brilliant, Oculus Info does what I need it to do, when you see the power of what this should be capable of, it really is going to open your eyes as to what might be possible. Now, 4G technology in drones is not actually new. Other manufacturers have utilized this 4G technology for quite some time. Indeed, DJI themselves have also offered this via a dongle working in mainland China. But with the launch of this DJI Dongle 2, it has essentially opened it up to be able to work in a whole host of more countries, primarily, of course, Europe, where, of course, I live to be able to bring you this test. What do you need for this to work then? Well, of course, you need to by the DJI Dongle 2 and of course I will leave a link for it in the video description so you can go check it out. Essentially what the DJI Dongle 2 does with the DJI Air 3 is it physically just installs into the top of the DJI Air 3 drone and I've made a full tutorial video that I will leave a link to at the end of this one so you can go check that out. If you are buying the DJI Mini 4 Pro it's slightly different because what you need to buy is this DJI mounting kit. Now for full disclosure my mounting kit hasn't actually turned up yet which is why this review is with the DJI Air 3 but as soon as my mounting kit does actually arrive I will repeat this entire test with the Mini 4 Pro just to see how well it does in a built up area. Now, of course, this is utilizing the 4G network, so you're going to need a data SIM card from a network provider in your country. The next question you may have is how much data uh, will you potentially need per flight or per battery? If you wish, I do have that data and I will give you that a little bit later on in the video just after the test flight. Now, buried in the fine print when you buy the DJI Cellular Dongle 2, it tells you you need an enhanced transmission service subscription. What on earth is that, you may ask? Why am I not just buying the DJI Dongle 2 and it just working? Well, essentially what DJI are doing is saying, not only are you paying for your SIM card and the Dongle 2, you also need to pay them basically for the relay service to basically utilize their servers, okay, for that mobile phone network connection to work between your controller and of course the Dongle in the drone. You do get your first year completely free. And for those of you that are wanting to know how much it costs, 
after that one year has expired you can see it buried within the dji fly app if we click on our drone and then go into device management additional accessories and if we go to renew that subscription that is priced at 26 pounds or of course whatever it shows up it depends on your local currency so just to make you aware of that so now we've learned all about the dji solid dongle 2 and what you actually need to get it working and what it is and why you may need it let's get on with the actual business of flying with it and how you get it working now of course if you have the dji rc n2 controller what you're going to do is use your mobile phone which will generally have a network connection or cellular service once you turn your drone on as you will see in the top corner it now gives you this 4g icon the dongle has got a network connection and of course your mobile phone has also got a connection as well because of course you've got cellular service all you need to do is tap that icon and then toggle that on the second method of actually doing it is going into the transmission tab where you can toggle it on from there now of course if you have the dji rc2 controller it does not have the ability to utilize the 4g network so what we need to do is just literally pair it with our mobile phone turning on our hotspot creating that hotspot and then obviously on the dji rc2 we swipe down on our screen click wi-fi connect to the mobile phone hotspot that you've already created and then that allows the dji rc2 to utilize the 4g network on your mobile phone through that wi-fi tethering okay and then of course when it comes to the dji cellular dongle 2 inside the dji air 3 the light is now flashing green meaning that has got a full connection so all we need to do is go back to our app and then quite simply toggle that on on the dji rc2 and you are absolutely absolutely good to go nothing else is required so the big moment a flight test with the dji cellular dongle 2 i'm not aware of any other videos uh, that are out there but this is my test flight and hopefully you find it informative enough so essentially what i'm going to do is just take off and go for a flight with the dji air 3 and i'm specifically going to fly in an area where pretty much straight off the bat my signal or line of sight between the controller and the drone is going to be blocked off by a bunch of trees vegetation and many of you will know that trees are the just worst for a uh, blocking signal believe it or not and this is what we spoke about earlier of course with that ocusync technology ocusync 4 is absolutely fantastic but of course it does require that you have clear uh, sight between the controller antennas and of course the drone to keep that connection whereas of course if you lose that with this dongle the whole idea is that the 4g connection actually does take over so as you can see you know i'm checking i've got routes i'm checking the map um i'm just making sure that there's no obstructions and uh, we're flying at a relatively decent altitude uh, 75 meters okay which is not too high not too low uh, we're not going to encounter any particular dangers at this sort of altitude but ultimately what you're going to see is we're going to start getting that signal message to say it's dropping in and out now many of you are going to have questions about this i did initially wonder about this myself however these signal messages are purely relating to the ocusync connection uh, so as we fly through this you're going to see something pretty incredible because even though we are getting those dips in the connection we're getting those warning messages i am moving the gimbal up and down just to test the connection and it is absolutely smooth as silk but what's to come is even more incredible that controller icon literally turns red what that means is we have lost full ocusync connection between the controller and the drone but look what's happening we have got full control of our drone we have got full video feed we are running on that 4g network we are no longer getting any warning messages other than when of course the Ocusync is trying to establish some sort of link it, you may see it dip in and out but essentially we go beyond the Ocusync range 
Let's not talk about why Okusink has given up at this short distance. I can only attribute that to the trees and the vegetation. But like I say, you know, I am utilizing spotters. So, you know, everything is being done as a safe flight. What you will see is in flight, you will find that the signal for the ground and the drone are indicated separately and they can sort of go up and down as you would expect if you get mobile phone black spots, for example. But ultimately, you know, it is kept that connection absolutely fine. Now, even on the way back, obviously, I've been flying around. Um, I basically emptied the battery because I wanted to get some data usage and find out how much data this would use. Not at any point of flying of this sort of distance did this Occusync come back in. However, as you can see, as we are sort of coming back to the home point, you know, the Occusync is constantly trying to reconnect. And as soon as we get close enough, that Occusync does indeed reconnect. Now, a cool safety feature DJI have implemented when flying using this dongle is if we tap the 4G icon, when we are flying using the 4G connection only, we cannot knock off that connection. We cannot turn off the enhanced transmission, which of course is the great safety feature. Now, many of you will want to know what will happen if you did hit a 4G black spot or it lose any sort of connection. Well, essentially DJI have got you covered and the traditional return to home will kick in. So please do make sure you've got your return to home settings set correctly. Of course, always make sure you are setting the appropriate height uh, to make sure you're above the nearest tallest object on the flight path back to the home point. So there we go. I think the flight with this little guy was perfectly successful. Hopefully this video, whilst obviously will be a little bit longer, I wanted to make this into the ultimate guide um, for the DJI Dongle 2 and basically tell you everything that I could possibly think you might need to know, how it works, how it fits in the drone, how you know you connect it to your controller, how it looks in the app, what it does, how it works. If I've of course missed anything, please do let me know in the comment section below. Many of you are going to want to know how much data this flight actually used and checking my usage, I used around 850 megabytes of data. Okay, so nearly a gig, which essentially might seem quite a lot, but we flew a full battery Battery, best part of 11 kilometers, just flying left, right, back, forward, etc. Now, my advice would be do not get carried away and start buying a data plan with a bunch of data, thinking that, oh my God, a giga flight is going to be huge. Of course, this is exceptional circumstances. If you're going to be flying in an area where basically you might get a porous signal, it might be worth switching it on, but for the majority of flights, the 4G signal, of course, you can just leave it off. Okay, so don't start getting drawn into buying or spending a huge amount of money per month if this is, of course, something you're interested in. As a YouTuber, it can be quite hard to get clicks on this platform. This leads many of us to use sort of buzzwords and striking titles such as game changer or must watch, etc. But on this video, I think it's perfectly justified. See you again soon.